If you want to play along with this tutorial, you can find the project under Interactive Tutorials in Desktop PineGrow Web Editor or on PineGrow Online. So just go into Interactive Tutorials and there find Tailwind Visual Editor section and open the Tailwind Bunny project. To make more space, you can hide the info panel. And if you need to bring it back, just use the icon here next to the complete button. So in this tutorial, we will explore how to use Tailwind to style project with plain CSS without Tailwind utility classes. As a starting point, we have a short story about Peter the Bunny and the, CSS, the Tailwind styling is already done for us. So to make it more interesting, let's start from scratch. Um, select the body element and then open the menu. And here we have removed Tailwind classes on this element and its sub-elements. This completely removes all Tailwind CSS classes and we are left with plain HTML version of the page. Let's check the structure of the page. It's very simple. So we have body and then we have a div that kind of contains everything. And here is like the title, image and another div that contains the content of the story. And for start, we will use Tailwind visual controls that are located in the element properties panel in the bottom half of this panel. And with the body selected, let's go into the margin and padding section and add some margins, padding, sorry, padding on all sides of the page. Then go to background and let's add a nice pink background color. Of course, if you, if you are not a fan of pink for this project, you just go ahead and use whatever color you prefer. Next, let's do the H1. Let's click on it to select it and then go up into the text section. Let's do size. Maybe six XL looks good. And the heading needs a bit of margin at the bottom. Then it's about right. And the heading also has like a small uh, sub element, like a small tag tagline. So let's select that. And let's just change the color. Let's make it pink and let's do weight let's do a thing and for h1 let's go back and we can say weight should be maybe a bit stronger like semi bold to make the design playful we will add borders around the image so first of all let's make it around it on all sides and if this is hard to see because of the border, we can always toggle the border, the menus. We can also use command T as a shortcut for that. And then border, let's do like eight pixels on all sides. And the color should be again kind of, yeah, light pink color. So it's quite easy to style with uh, Tailwind. Or we have all these sensible presets, all the colors are there, spacings are there. Um, yeah, so let's also do margin, maybe eight on the bottom. Okay, that's good enough for the image for now. So let's go down to paragraphs. And Let's do size, maybe 
pixel and we can check the how it looks here on medium maybe that's too big large looks okay we have a bit of a problem right so we we don't have just one paragraph so we have one two three four paragraphs and of course we could click on each paragraph and you know style it the same with the same css uh, tailwind classes but that really looks like a, a waste of time and now we can create a style based on the classes that are now on the selected element so let's here click on the create a new style and Pinegrow asks us what kind of style we want to create because now starting from Pinegrow 8 we support two types of styles the new type is called component styles and these styles map into a group of CSS rules and this lets us use Tailwind to implement custom CSS styling without having all those Tailwind utility classes scattered all over our HTML code and the second type of style that's like a legacy type that Pinegro supported before um, keeps classes directly on HTML element elements and then uh, it, it's like a way to easily manage those classes so for this tutorial we will work with component styles we will use Tailwind to implement uh, custom CSS styling without using Tailwind uh, utility classes so here we have to enter the selector for our style and we have some suggestions like p will affect all p elements on the page and at the moment there are four of them so let's just click p and ok and this created p style that targets all p elements on the page and you can see that all of them changed so to make this more obvious let's make them very big so here they are all p elements now use the same style so let's go back to using I think it was Excel and notice that the p style is selected so if we switch into inline then whatever we do it will only affect the first element so if I change the margin say margin bottom margin 4 then this only affects the selected elements these classes are now let me show you the code the inline classes are still located into the class attribute directly on the HTML element and we have a easy way to transfer these classes to P style so that all our paragraphs will have bottom margin 4 so let's do that and the class is gone from the p element and because it was transferred into the style all our paragraphs share the same um, bottom margin okay so let's go to this next let's go to h2 and let's select size and add again some bottom margin and let's decorate it so we'll do an underline and let's keep to our nice pink theme and style maybe wavy that's cool Yeah, four is good. How about offset? Yeah, something like that. So now, if we would have uh, another H2 element, 
Oh, okay, not yet. So let, let, let's do the test. So I will go insert, I will say h2, another title, and I will drag it here. It's not styled, right? Why not? Because so far all the styling we did is here under the inline section, so it's directly on the h2 element. So here we have class attribute with all tailwind classes. And again we can create a component style for all h2 elements. So I selected h2, I could also type, but this is kind of quicker, and OK. And now the classes are gone from h2 element and were transferred to a component style that affects all H2 elements on the page. And now the second H2 element also has the same styling as the first one. But let's get rid of it. We don't need a, a title there. And here we have heading 3. So we will style this one as well. What should be the size? maybe 2xl, and then let's um, add some bottom margin, can close this. Four and do some weight, a bit bold. And we can go back to H2. Here H2 style is selected and that, let's also do semi-bold there. So it's kind of using the same pattern. And now let's create H3 style so that all H3 elements are covered by this styling. And it also has small elements, so let's do something fun with this one, maybe do some background. And add padding. On all sides. And make it rounded. And let's decrease the size. You know, you can play with this, you can do whatever you want. So we are just show, showing off all the options that are available to us. Even smaller. Okay. So we have now small. So here we have a decision to make. So we can, we could, for example, style this as small for all small elements on the page, but notice that the small here is different from the small that H1 is using. So what we want to do is basically just kind of scope this small to only affect the small elements inside H3. And the easiest way to do that is to add this declaration not as a separate style, but under the H3 style. So, to do that, we click here, and then we say add to parent style at sub-element variant, so we will add it to H3 style. And if we go now into H3 and let's switch into the, uh, the tree view, we can see that we have H3 style, that then contains declaration for all small elements within the H3 element. So, in this way we avoided having a separate small style with selector H3 small and we are keeping our like H3 styling nicely self-contained. Okay, so I'm happy with H3. This piece, okay. 
And let's make a kind of fun box the styling for this last paragraph. So we will switch to inline because we don't want all paragraphs to look the same. Here we want to do something special only for this paragraph. So let's go to background and set the color and do some padding. on all sides and, and make it rounded and we can also do negative margins minus four it's up there and minus four here and I will disable visual helper so that we can see our little box and now we can create a, a new style for this box so now inline is selected here are all the elements and let's do a new style but we don't want to add this to p we want to create new style and then let's type dot box so this style will affect all elements with class box. And because this is a class, PyGraw is smart enough to realize that, it will also add the class box to this element so that the style is immediately applied. And we can now switch here. You see, like for this paragraph, we have a couple of styling kind of scopes. So first we have P style that affects all paragraphs on the page. And then we have box that affects classes with, uh, with elements that have the class box. And then we have inline that adds, manages classes directly on this HTML element. And when we are styling, we can switch around um, using this um, style control. So let's go back because here we see in the three panel these blue boxes are styles that affect uh, elements. Um, so here we have the styles and for H1 we didn't yet create a style. So let's do that now. So here we will do H1 and small we will add to h1 style so that h1 is nicely contained with all the declarations for h1 itself and also for the small element within h1 and again we can see that here in the class tree we have h1 that also contains declaration for the small element and let's do the class for images style for images as well. So at the moment we can't create uh, styles directly from the tree view. So if we say create new style, uh, we switch back to the visual controls and here we can use this button to create new style for images. And uh, let's also do body. And we will create style for the body. And now if we take a look at the HTML code of the page, we can notice that it's completely free of all Tailwind utility classes. So H1 nowhere to be seen. So we, we have like class box because that's our special class. We added to to the last paragraph, but other than that, there are no Tailwind classes to be seen. So where are they? So let's save, go into the project, and if we open Tailwind CSS file that is kind of compiled and generated on the fly, and if we scroll down, we can see them here. So that's not it. There we have to go a bit up. Let's search 
one, one. So yeah, here it is. There are classes for our paragraphs, for H2, for H3, H3 with small box, H1, H1 small. So component styles let us kind of use Tailwind without Tailwind. We can do custom CSS styling with the benefit and convenience of using all the Tailwind presets and visual tools and all, all the different variants which make things more simple than, than if we would do like plain CSS with media queries and stuff like that. But the, the result is normal CSS file without using Tailwind utility classes. So, and that's very convenient and, and really very cool and fun, fun to do. So let's also do like the first one. We want to make it a bit like kind of, we want to make this a lead paragraph. So let's make the size bigger. And weight, let's do this and line height, normal, a bit extra bottom margin, six. And uh, we are doing this under the inline because we, we want just this element to have this uh, styling. And now when this is done, we can again create new style. And let's call it lead dot lead. So this will affect all elements with class lead. And the class lead was automatically added to our paragraph. So now you might wonder, oh, is there like a, a it would be nice to see all these styles in one place, right? Without having to like jump around elements to see them. And we can do that. So here we have show style manager and that opens the style manager panel where we can see all the styles that are used on the page and let me collapse the project so we have more space and i can also hide this one so here all the project styles are shown and not just that they are fully editable so for example we can toggle classes or we can just click on the class to change its value. And we can do other stuff. For example, here we can um, add a variant. Um, so everything is fully editable and also searchable. So if we want to look at the text classes where they are. Just type here and immediately we, we see all the text classes. So this is very powerful. And another useful tip. So now I, because my space here is not so large, UI space, I collapsed the properties panel. But let, let's say we want visual controls while we editing this element. So we can just open floating properties panel by using this menu or pressing the P key and then immediately we have our uh, visual controls available to us. And we can move it around and we can close it when we don't need it. So what else could we do? Um, let's have some fun with CSS grid. So let's select um, kind of the, the div container that contains all, all the layout, all the content of the story. And of course we have grid controls here in visual properties, but that, you know, grid is really visual, visual uh, concept, right? And now we're starting in this version of Pinegrow, 
We can use Pinegrove's Visual CSS Grid Editor also with Tailwind. So, maybe you didn't see what I did. So, here we have on the element, we have added CSS Grid, also common G shortcut. And then, because um, like on small screen, there's not much we can do, right? So let's go and say, okay, we will create Tailwind Grid on for the size large. And of course, then this will also affect all the uh, sizes bigger than that. So until large, it will be a simple stacked uh, layout. And on large, we will use CSS Grid. So let's switch to large here so we can actually see what's going on. And then let's create the grid. And let's have a simple two column display. And for rows, we will change this to auto so that it fits the content size. And let's create an, another row. So we have now a two by two grid. And we need some spacing, four, maybe eight. That's a gap. And I will close this and now let's select the H1. And now it is placed automatically. So by default, grid items are just placed one by one in available spaces. And we can use these handles to kind of uh, tell each place each grid item in, in specific area. And now we stretched the H1 in the top row and, and all of this actually fell into place just as we want it to be. So we want image on the right left side and we want all the text on the right side. And we have a special CSS grid tutorial for Tailwind available also in, in the same section. So we won't go much into the details of CSS grid here, but that should be enough for now, right? To mention one detail that we should be mindful of. So let me switch into control. So when we dragged the H1, then the classes for that were added uh, directly on the element. Let me switch to class three. So we can see inline, we have grid position classes. And because this, where, like the, the rule where the grid position goes is decided by this selector. So here, all of these are just inline classes for different uh, screen sizes. And because this all was selected, then when we dragged and resized the H1, those classes uh, went into the kind of inline uh, area. So they are added directly to H1. So let me show you the code. Class equals, here they are. And we can easily get them uh, under the H1 style. So one way would be, as we did before, we would just go here and we would say add to style h1. But let me show you an alternative way. So I will use command click, that's on Mac on Windows, it would be control click to select these classes. And then I will say copy. And then I will right click here on h1 and I will say paste classes. And now we have them here directly on H1 style. And because we don't need them uh, on the inline area anymore, we can simply disable them with this checkbox. And then when we reselect the element, they are gone. So, uh, the, like unchecking the class will actually remove it, but it still stays displayed so that it is easy to toggle it back. So let's do, let's do a couple of fun things. So now imagine that we want to use the same layout 
for something else. So let's let's ask our AI assistant to change the story and make it uh, be about surfing. I was testing this before, so the prompt is already here. So change the story about surfing. And here we have a new story and now we can go into the design panel and we can select the image and then we can take the colors from the selected image and all of the, the color palette was updated but notice that you know we still have pink here everywhere and the reason for that is that pink color is kind of hard-coded in our styles and for normal HTML if you are familiar with Pingro we have this feature to swap tailwind colors um, but colors are actually now defined in styles. But luckily, we have a similar feature for styles. So we could either click on in each individual style and use swap colors here, or we can do it for all styles at once. So let's go here, click all, we change pink into primary. So let's save the project and Let's publish it. We will publish it as a static site uh, on Netlify using our Netlify integration. And here it is. It's super simple to publish um, static HTML sites with Pingro. And there is a lot more to the new Tailwind features in, in, in Pingro 8, but this just scratched the surface and I hope that it gave you some kind of overview of what is possible and how to work with it. I, I hope you find it useful and apologies, I just I'm unable to, to create short tutorials, it always become a bit long, but uh, I think there are so many exciting features that it's, you know, it's worthwhile to mention them and, and go a bit deeper into topics. So the best is that you just take it for a spin, either on Pingro Online or Desktop Pingro, and uh, see what this new Tailwind experience can do for you. Okay, take care, bye-bye.